Calculate total square footage of turf needed for your project. Select the grass that you're going to install and come up to remove your existing grass and topsoil. We recommend using a sod cutter. This will save you time and energy when it's time to tear the base out. You want to cover all grass areas of your yard with a sod cutter. Drive around from the outside to the inside in a spiral-like pattern. Once you've got that, go the other direction and create crisscross lines on your grass. This will make for easy removal of the topsoil. With the top layer cut, you're going to want to remove 4 to 6 inches of your existing yard. Try to dig your yard out as evenly as possible throughout the entire tear-out process. This will speed up raking it out when you're through. Before even starting your project, plan ahead so you know what you're going to do with the existing yard once you tear it out. To speed up the tear out process, we use a Bobcat MP52 walk behind tractor. Your tear out will be done in a fraction of the time than if you were to dig it all out by hand. Once your tear out is done, you want to rake your existing base as evenly as possible. With the yard nice and level, and the pile of road base arriving, it's time to bring the base into the yard. Dumping wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow is the most consistent way to get your base somewhat level before raking it out. Begin dumping your base at the furthest away point in your yard. Work backwards, placing pile after pile, and rake it even as you go. Once you've got the base as level as possible, you want to water it thoroughly to allow it to settle while compacting. With a plate compactor, you want to drive around in a similar pattern that you did with the sod cutter, overlapping your lines, ensuring the base is compacted throughout. Use a plate tamper to get to those areas that the compactor can't reach. To compact around trees and other areas, simply use a 2x4 and a hammer. Once your base is compacted, look over the entire area for imperfections that you might need to come back and either fill or flatten. Bring in additional base to fill low spots where needed. Look for high areas to take down with the rake as well. Spread the whole base evenly. When you're happy with the base, give it a final compacting. Refer back to your turf plan drawing and measure and mark your base exactly where your pieces of turf are going to lay. Measure and mark from both directions so when you bring in your turf, you can set it down in the spot that it's going to be laying in. When you're ready to cut the turf, you want to roll it out on a level surface. Starting from the end, measure down the edge of the turf and put a cut mark on the required measurement for your piece. Be sure to do this on both sides to guarantee a straight cut. Roll the turf back up so your cut lines are on top. Use a chalk line and put a straight line between your two cuts. With a sharp knife and a steady hand, follow your line and cut the turf as straight as possible. Next, we're going to flip the edges of the turf over to cut the excess material off. Start between the first and second tuft and follow that line all the way down. Keeping tension on your loose cutoff will help with your cuts. Once both edges are cut, roll your piece up and bring it into the yard. You want to set it down as close to position as possible so when you roll it out, you don't damage the base.
Once you roll the piece out, if you need to make minor adjustments, get around the edges and give it a light shake to get some air underneath it. This allows it to move easily. When cutting the turf out around objects, whether flat or curved, you want to fold the turf back, spot the distance you'd like it to go, and give it some release cuts. You want your relief cuts close enough together so that the turf is able to lay flat on the ground while the flaps go up the object which you're cutting around. Once you've got your relief cuts done and your turf is laying nicely on the ground, come back and cut the flaps off. When cutting to sidewalks, patios, or other objects level with the turf, you want to pull back on the cutoff piece to allow you to see what you're cutting to. When cutting around trees or any other objects that are in the way of your turf plan, you need to give yourself big relief cuts to allow the turf to bend around the object. Take the turf back little by little, and make sure you don't cut deeper than necessary. The goal when cutting around trees or any other object that's in your turf plan is for your first straight relief cut to meet back up with itself behind the tree. When seaming two pieces of turf together, you want to set the additional piece as close as you can to your existing piece of turf. Roll it out and butt your edges together as flush as possible. With the piece in place, grab the turf on both sides of the seam and bend it apart. Lay down small sections at a time, paying close attention to the backing and whether or not it overlaps. If you need to cut some turf away, cut the piece that you just laid down, leaving the edge of the existing piece alone. Check your seam every couple of inches and work your way down the entire seam. If you end up with any gaps between your pieces, keep them under an eighth of an inch. This will prevent your seam from being visible once you're finished. Once your seams line up nice, cut a piece of seam tape to match the length of your seam. Fold both pieces of turf over and place seam tape centered on your seam. Spike both ends of the seam tape so it does not slide around when you're spreading the glue. Pour the glue evenly and spread it to the full width of the seam tape to get the strongest possible bond. Keep the amount of glue consistent throughout the entire seam. When laying down the turf to create your seam, you need help holding both sides up at the same time while you start at the opposite end of the seam. You want to lay down both pieces at the same time while keeping the fibers up and completely away from the glue. It's very important that you don't let the turf stick down ahead of where you're working. It's highly recommended that you have assistance with this step in the installation. Make sure to keep the fibers up and away from the glue to the very end of your seam. Once the turf is all laid down, Come back and rub the seam with a lot of pressure on both sides to make sure that the glue is completely stuck down to both surfaces. You want to spike the turf on both sides of the seam every few inches. Use the nail to part the fibers and expose the backing. 
Make sure that when you pound the nail in, you do not trap any fibers underneath the head of it. Keep the nails as close to the center as possible and repeat this throughout the entire seam. With just a stiff bristle push broom, you need to first brush the fibers up to allow the sand to drop in. Using a large flathead shovel, you want to lay the sand down in a back dragging motion. You want it to fall evenly and be approximately two and a half pounds of sand per square foot of turf. The total amount of sand infill used is split between two separate applications. The first initial fill and brooming will get the fiber standing upright. Then you want to come back with the second layer of sand to complete your infill. Come back with your push broom and brush the sand around until it drops completely into the thatch of your turf. Once the sand is brushed in, the fiber should stand upright and it should appear to look like natural grass. If you have access to a power broom for your installation, there's no need to brush the fibers up before you spread your sand. Power broom or not, you still want to keep a consistent 2.5 pounds of sand per square foot of turf. With the power broom, start at the edge of your yard where the fibers are facing away from the fence. Push the power broom firmly into the turf. Pull the throttle and walk backwards steadily in a straight line while the power broom stands the fibers up. Work slowly and make sure you overlap all of the lines. The power broom stands the fibers up and allows the sand to drop evenly into the thatch of the turf. Once your entire yard has been infilled with sand, come back and look for high and low spots throughout the entire surface. Fill the low spots and simply push the high spots out with the power broom. Once you've topped up your infill, give the yard a final power brooming. Use a leaf blower to remove any sand left behind. The end result is a flawless looking yard that remains beautiful throughout all seasons of the year.